uh, <laughs> working with the people of the award and the one that uh, went into the award to you know present their own uh, at their own programs and be sure that they could you know fit into this uh, tool. Then we tried to discuss it with professionals, and I was in London with Aja uh, trying to present it to uh, English-speaking uh, colleagues with a, a lot of difficulties that I am going to evoke uh, later on. And then the last point in our history of discussion is today and the days after trying to have your impressions and your questions and your, uh, you know, your against and your pros and everything. So what are the, you know, basic, this is very qualitative result compared to what we have in, research, in the research session. Uh, the first feeling, which is more a feeling than a result, is the fact that there are so many diverse aspects uh, in building a program that in a way kind of it's like a you know, pool of cold water for people and they kind of you know, react uh, suddenly saying, are you sure we, we need all that enormous amount of, of stuff? And then because of that same reason, it's hard to at the same time integrate and compare and discuss and be uh, you know, uh, critical. Uh, so we, we need to kind of repeat these sessions of explaining to little by little get to critical appraisal from uh, the people that are, you know, know the, the, the tool. Uh, <coughs> some critical elements uh, uh, have to be taken into consideration uh, in the designing of an international tool because we are very ambitious. We want to have a tool that we can share in the SICA world, in the SICA world, it's really very, very international. So, uh, of course, we have cultural uh, careers, and we have, we do have, wording careers uh, or differences, and we could see that very well with our English-speaking uh, uh, colleagues in, in London this year. So, the wording and the significance of notions is different uh, depending on where you are from. So the first help that probably we deeply need is a language help coming from uh, English-speaking colleagues, uh, Spanish-speaking colleagues to be sure to adjust, you know, because in fact we, we're both French-speaking, so we did work in our own language to make things as rich as possible. And now we're reaching the point where we definitely need to have other people that you know, share their expertise in language with, with, uh, with us. Uh, and then there's another thing that we kind of bumped into, but we knew that, which is there are other existing tools, of course, and some of them are very strong in their areas. So uh, the people that come from this area and that are icon people have to kind of, you know, try to see how it works with their own tools. And the difficulty is that very often, for example, the American tools uh, stress on be inclusive, which is a recommendation. We don't, we are not at this level. We don't say be something. We say, have you thought about such and such dimension? Which is, we, we are saying the same thing, but just not the different, not, not in the same way. So that's a kind of adjustment that you have to do properly, all of you in your countries and which is not uh, easy. <coughs> and then also in certain countries, and you don't know that, you do have national political recommendations some of the things we, we touch uh, belong to this thing too, and so you have to adjust to that too. Um, now, what, what is the future? Uh, first, we have to consider forgotten uh, dimensions, things you, we haven't touched, and already some of our colleagues have said, you know, you didn't, you didn't touch at all this dimension, and that's great. And sometimes we give a lot of importance to things, that might have perhaps more or less importance for other people, and that's also something that we look for, uh, you know, help uh, about. Uh, then, as I mentioned, Colette, the of course, research has been considered as being something very important. For us, the question of research was: let us not just stick to research for evaluating something, knowing whether if the program worked or not but could we not think of other dimension of research? For example, I was thinking, uh, hearing to our French colleague, 
about um, about um, school and museum. Uh, what is the real difference between school and museum in my country? You know, and how does that affect or not the programs I offer to my my school children? You see, things of uh, researchers that are more qualitative and not only uh, evaluative type of, of uh, research. And then bring, of course, more and more diverse and better examples to illustrate each dimension of the process too. The these uh, examples are the ones we know both of us, but I'm sure we, we do have more of these. So, um, this is the last thing. We are going to start the process of presenting the programs that have, uh, you know, been, been retained by the best practice uh, um, jury. Um, and I asked them, I was very bad with them, and I said, you have to stick to a very short time, and you have to stick to the theme of the session. So the theme of the session of today is conceiving, tomorrow we'll talk about developing, and the day after tomorrow, appreciating, and you see that we have not put that evaluation purposely, just because of what I just uh, said. And then after, I'm, I do pray you discuss. Give, give us things, you know, things that we can add to that tool because it is not our tool, it's your tool and it's very important that we share all that. So I give the floor to the next speaker. Thank you, my
depending on the age group. And finally, making topologies with geometric shapes. Let's see, for example, uh, and also we inserted an interesting uh, mod module into this uh, workshop. We asked them to describe the animals or birds that they were going to create. And thus, this helped them stay focused on the subject and added more fun to the process. You can see a description of a bunny, a rabbit, that was running away from the wall and then found orange vegetables and ate so much that it turned into orange and when the wolf found it, it got scared and ran away. <laughs> Another one was Little Piglet, his name was Chin, and uh, the child describes how she, how she appreciates the sun and its radiating rays. And the same was Piglet, who was so fond of sun that came out and enjoyed and kind of thanked the sun with his uh, little chin. And you can see the basic geometric forms that they have applied to create these animals, which was the main, uh, the main target. And the creative process, and you can see different kinds of animals here, different geometric shapes and forms. Another one, of course they exhibited, at the end of the session they exhibited their works. Some of the sessions were sculpting, other, other than uh, creating collages. Again, different uh, children holding their creation, creations. All are geometric shapes and forms. So that's, this was the description of the program and how the program was conceived. Origin of the project, the educational program Creativity and Imagination was conceived from Ivana Shankova Geometric Forms and Images Exhibition. The idea was to introduce children to shapes and colors and to promote their creativity and imagination to achieve their own form, desired shapes and images. Aims and objectives. The main purpose of the program was to contribute to the art education of children in Armenia, to bring the Christian Center for the Arts closer to children, schools, and families, to support their creativity and imagination. And of course, this was highly relevant institutionally, and the project was, uh, with the, was relevant with the objective of the Christian Center for the Arts to educate the society, introduce the Gerald uh, Christian Collection, and develop appropriate programs for this purpose. We achieved that through entertainment. Beneficiaries were children aged 6 to 12, and the program lasted for one year. We had 50 school and 25 family visits from Yerevan and other regions of Romania, and over 2,000 children took part in these workshop sessions. Also, the first session was for children from an orphanage. The outcome was that children learned to zoom ethics and were introduced to creative thinking. They were able to apply their imagination and reinterpret shapes and forms to achieve their desired images of animals and birds. And the questions and programs contributed to the alternative education in Armenia. Other aspects of the program which we are not going to focus were development, implementation, interpretation techniques, communication means, resources, and funding. But we are not going to focus on that. And again, this is the question center for the arts in night time. And of course, our all educational programs, we can find at this website, www.cmf.in slash education. We have so far, we have more than 30 educational programs, all of which you can find at this website, with images and videos. And I thank you very much for your kind attention.
are a private cooperative with more than a thousand practitioners and 15 year experience. We are born to cover what we refer to as additional services inside museums and archaeological sites. That would, go, uh, that would go for firstly from the learning department to ticket desks, info points, booking service, call centers, museum security guards and assistants. One of the most interesting services is that of creating a link between the contents of the museum or site and the various targets of public. That means working with the management of the institution to correctly interpret the cultural goals that a place wants to vehicle, and then planning creative projects to attract, entertain and educate various kinds of visitors. This always keeping in contact with the commissioner in order to align quality standards and adapt to specific requests, needs or limits. For every single site, a six-month seasonal or annual action plan is elaborated based on the observations, suggestions and evaluations carried out by the company through questionnaires for the public and meetings with the frontline staff. A constant feedback is necessary to make sure all the requisites required by the institution are met. Once the activity is conceived, a form that contains the basic outline of the project and the specific conditions of the locations is filled out. These forms allow a swift even and efficient communication with the operators that undertake the activity and compose a record of all the activities created in more than 15 years of experience in this field. Coculture works with an integrated software system that allows, allows the various parts involved in managing the educational service to keep a constant contact. The central office, the call center operator, the ticket desk and the educational operator keep in contact using a computerized system for transmitting booking data and any other detail useful for assigning the activity to the most appropriate educational operator. The educational operators with a certified archaeological and art history background can perfect their knowledge for a given activity using an online archive with study material. This system is completed with activity description form <coughs> with descriptive tools shared by the various part in order to assure evenness and quality. Every single activity follows a flowchart that can be summarized in four main moments. Booking as a result of the first contact the user establishes with the Oracle Center. Matching, assigning the activity to the fitting educational operator after having received the complete schedule for the week. Welcome on site. The ticket desk welcomes the user identifying the reserved activity and assigned educational operator activities, which closes the circle with a direct relation between user and educational operator. We will now present activities for our two main targets, general public and schools. As seen in the earlier slide, we divide our attention into activities planned for a general public, special events, 
guided tours for organized groups or single visitors, and school groups. In both situations, we found it's what essential to find new original ways of conveying information and making the visit interesting and effective. We started by spotting the critical elements that inevitably come up when using archaeological heritage as a communicative tool. The fragmentary nature of the object, the lack of their original context, and the distance in time and culture. These brought our efforts to shifting our communication methods from the traditional uh, and passive descriptive form and intellective communication with many descriptions and historical facts to a more active and public and emotional one. An emotional communication with shared observation and evoking the historical context. Archaeology in prisons, an extremely positive response, was collected when the guided tours were aligned by the intervention of actors dressed in beautiful and historical accurate costumes, quoting original ancient texts in the original ancient locations, literally making the visitor feel out of context rather than the opposite. All in Romani Eramos, a Latin inscription is read, translated and interpreted. The stone fragment comes to life, bringing us a story from the past. Double sense. A guided tour that highlighted the wine culture in antiquity was completed with a tasting of wines that have kept the, that tradition. Newspapers covered these events, which was a brilliant way to make our archaeological heritage attractive for a wide range of public. One of our main missions is that of using this heritage for social integration, because the contents were in every part agreed with experts of the ecology division of the Ministry of Cultural Heritage, our commission in this case, these events were a positive example of how scientifically accurate matters can attract a non-expert public. We found it productive to have a special department entirely dedicated to keeping relations with schools. The activity plans for schools is the most challenging in that it must be affordable by public institutions and deals with a non-voluntary public. A special effort is needed to carry away the studies into a new unusual experience so as to awaken their interest and awareness and sow the seeds of future culture fans. We use different methodologies according to the various age groups and the school education goals. Local schools become frequent clients that express their preference and we make sure these are met for every single case. With time, friendly bonds have been created between school staffs and ours that make the learning experience for students ever more effective. As an example of how the service has been uh, differentiated according to various sorts of public, I will list here some of the activities planned for school groups. For kindergarten children, we have a project named At the Top of Mount Olympus, where education operator uses a pop-up book, especially created by an artisan that collaborated with us to tell stories on Greek and Roman gods that the children then had to find among the statues contained in the museum. For primary school, one of the activity is a day as an ancient Roman. The children moved within the archaeological part of the Roman forum, wearing costumes and reading outlines so as to become the characters that explained the location. Secondary school, 
responded greatly to the fresco technique, where they actually got to create a fresco by mixing the plaster to draw and coloring the surface in a lamp after having seen the ancient Roman example in the museum. High schools could challenge with lingua et litere latine, an audio guide of the Colosseum entire in Latin, combined with a PowerPoint to be shown in the classroom that ensures the right preparation. In the last 50 years, we have had the great privilege of expanding and collaborating with some of the most prestigious and interesting institutions of our country. This has granted us a unique experience to take museum additional services to a whole new level by extracting the full evocative potential that antiquities hold, making them a priceless tool to awake the awareness of a variety of kinds of public. Therefore, tavern, social integration, and an education to the fact that lying out our heritage in an innate right of every individual. And you from the book of Shakti. I'm back now from our term of COVID because of something that is a program that is occurring on the whole country. the German Art Education Association and the German Association of Museum Education. I am Vice President of the German Association of Museum Education and repre represent here all mentioned partners. The project was supported financially thanks to the Cultural Foundation of the German Länder the Robert Bosch Foundation, the PWC Foundation, the Federal Agency for Civic Education, and the MacArthur Foundation. All partners are honored that the project was chosen for the SICA Best Practice Award, and we are happy that we were able to contribute to the efforts that are made for best practice in the field of education and cultural action, and we are willing to contribute further. About 135 schools with over 3,000 students and 180 museums took part in this eight-year program. The program was realized in four steps. The pilot phase featured an intercultural theme in eight ethnological and historical museums spread all over Germany. Different school types and age groups were involved. From November 2004 until July 2005, they worked on multimedia presentations on an intercultural subject. The outcomes have been registered in written report and on the website of the project. The next phase in 2005-06 was organized as a competition. With the title Experiments Please, students were given the opportunity to gather pieces of arts or other museum objects using computer programs. In cooperation with the museum, they chose one or more objects, set it or them into a wider frame, and transferred it or them either into a computer frame, created a website out of it, made an audio tour, a film, and so on. Most of the 56 projects describe the making of websites about artists, artworks, or the history of a collection or a masterpiece. Another approach was the social media project Thousand Times Homeland in 2007-8. The participants were asked to create a 21st century Heimatmuseum 
Homeland Museum, a sort of local museum, a museum of local history with special sentimental connotations in Germany. In order to create this museum, they had to choose an object in the museum that they related with their home or homeland, take a picture of it, upload it, in, it on the website, and add their own comment in order to exchange and share their ideas about Heimat with others. In total, more than 920 contributions have been put to God together. Songs, collages, stories, little films, poems, etc. This approach was in this way different from the first two steps, as students could participate also on their own. This was made possible thanks to the openness of the Web 2.0 project. In order to strengthen also long-term cooperation between schools and museums, <coughs> the fourth step brought again together one museum and one school for building partnerships. This step was carried out from 2009 until 2011. Out of 150 applicants, 15 have been chosen to participate. Here, the aim of sharing experiences was fulfilled as every single project has been accompanied by experts and the outcomes of their work published in the brochure. Each patron visited his or her project on the spot and gave advice. In three development workshops, participants exchanged their work in progress, they exchanged experiences and they also got some practical help and qualification regarding project work and presentation techniques. Moreover, students participated in the last workshop. According to the project, these are the main results that are very important for school and museum projects in order to be successful. Mutual planning with common aims, defining milestones and limits regarding financial issues and timing, school and museum being at close quarters, continuous and regular meetings between teachers and museum specialists, support of the project by the directors, involving so-called third experts, combining two or three school lessons at a time for project work, and a final product that is going to be presented to the public. The partners of Schulberg Museum are convinced that every young person until he or she is 15 years old should have taken part in a cooperation project with his or her school and the museum. As this is at the moment not the case, eight requests have been formulated that should be considered and translated into action, action supported by politics. I already said that the results of the best practice projects of this last step are published in the brochure and there you will find also these requests <coughs> downloaded on this website. I am now going to stress on the first dimension of the best practice tool, the conceiving and planning of the program. And I am combining some of the different points from this dimension, not only for lack of time, but also because I think that they belong together, at least in my point of view. Anyway, for our project, the best practice tool can be applied in two different ways taking into account the whole project and regarding the single school museum corporations. Origin, beneficiaries and aims. Cultural action is considered as a part of our education system and not to be abandoned. Unfortunately, cultural action is not enough established in schools yet and cultural institutions offer not enough adequate programs for young people. This is why Schulet Museum was started in 2004 in order to create networks aiming at giving students from all different types of schools access to museums in order to ensure quality and to develop criteria for successful cooperation in both school and museums. Partnerships. As the program was supposed to be nationwide and the schools and museums were supposed to meet and work together, different partners active in these fields have been started. Resources. One project coordinator was supposed to accompany the whole process from the beginning to the end. During the first years, she was the person who should analyze the project, giving advice as well as reporting to the representatives of the three associations involved. Furthermore, she was supposed to organize all information for all participants, to give content to the website of the project, to organize the work with the media, and to authorize financial grants. 
Moreover, 10 museums have been involved in order to help with their expert knowledge. Each of them should have special methodical competence and long time experience in the area of educational services with schools in order to be able to give additional hints and tips to the participants. In the last period, the sponsors were asked to contribute not only with their organizational experience, but also with expertise, expertise regarding content. Content interpretation and communication. Schulek Museum was planned and designed, aiming at dealing each year with a different methodical focus. For the first year, the focus was set on interculturality and multimedia. The second year was dedicated to a nationwide contest regarding multimedia with various subjects. And in the third phase, the focus was set on a social media project. The last period focused on sustainable projects within schools and museums that could in the future be applied by other museums. Nevertheless, as the title of the program has F in it, every project should deal with multimedia. This was chosen in order to let students work with a device they, love, they, like, work, they like working with anyway. Like this, the museum threshold was supposed to be low for young people and they could work very creatively with the museum objects, which would not be possible with original objects. In terms of the participative approach, there were further more strict rules regarding content and method. All museums and schools involved could personally and independently choose the exact subject of the projects. Evaluation. In order to be able to obtain information about the proceedings of the cooperation projects, about experiences in the structure of the partnerships between schools and museums, and about the success for implementing these projects, standardized questionnaires and interviews have been planned for the last step by the Institute of Education at the University, University of Erlangen Nuremberg. I was asked to focus more on the conception and the planning of the program. This is thus the end of my presentation. If you are interested in hearing more about how the program is carried out, about the outcomes of the evaluation or its realization, you can ask me later. For example, when I saw that 
you have a partner that is a museum, like the Jewish, the Jewish Museum in Venice, not only the, the Forum in Rome. How, how you put it or interact with the philosophy and aims of the educational projects in every institution and how you share your, your experience with that? Yes, thank you very much for the question. So as you saw on, this, on one of the slides, uh, the children, before entering into the main exhibition gallery, there is a lobby area. We have a poster with funny cartoon-like characters there showing what they are not supposed to do. For example, touching artworks, eating and drinking, rubbing in the gallery, talking loudly on the cell phone, and uh, making photographs with the flashlight. So that poster explained that visually and also our guides explained them verbally what they cannot do by pointing to those images in the posters. It's interesting because uh, I experienced one museum in Portugal. Uh, when you see not the thing that you're not supposed to do in the museum, but what is allowed you to do in the museum, that is very interesting. It's not only to say in the museum, you don't have to, yeah. so that, that you can do things. And it's interesting if, if you maybe reflect on we, we, we did proper, or we, you know, proper behavior in the museum, but we wanted to point out what they cannot do. And in fact, it was a very rewarding when those children told their parents, you know, when their parents wanted to touch the artwork, they said, no, no, you don't touch the artworks. You know, it was very rewarding to see that kind of feedback. <clears throat> what you say is a big problem, it's a real problem. Because um, it's not uh, so easy to uh, create a virtual circle uh, between uh, the institution, the educational department, the uh, cooperative is outside, and the uh, is in um, <coughs> In, uh, in our experience of years, we could create um, a, a process that goes from the creating program with the with the institution. Then we go to the educational department and we want to know what of the museum, what of the um, of an exposition we have to uh, communicate. And uh, then we go to the visitor, and we know, and we'll know from the visitor, the schools, but also tourists, what they want when they go in a museum, when they go in a site. We uh, create uh, the program with this, uh, this point. Excuse me for my English, it's not a good English at all. And so, um, we can divide the program before we uh, go to define it in, and transform it in a, a, a real activity. The real activity is in our activity form. The activity form contains the, uh, what the institutions have to say and what the public have to say. This is a real uh, um, document that then um, uh, um, goes uh, from one to the other um, uh, office of, of, of our cooperative. Also, Call Center knows the, the same uh, document uh, that, uh, that are in the hands of the operators. Yes. And so we have one, uh, one uh, uh, program, but it's condivided. And the operators know uh, through this document what the institutions want to make. And I hope it's... I have an extra 
question, but so that's why I'm snatching the microphone. Uh, about, about exactly about that. Uh, for having been for a long time uh, responsible for, 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 for national uh, mediators in France, in national museums, uh, one of the great problems that we generally have is trying to have the person who takes the group in hand exactly aware of what the group has done before, what the group wants, and whatever. So we were, you were touching that in your speech, and I was wondering, you know, what do you do for that? To be sure that, you know, the expectation of the group that's coming is known by the person who's going to take care of them. Um, when the group have, has um, uh, explained his, uh, his problems uh, during the uh, booking, we know this why uh, the, because the, uh, the call center operator knows what, uh, what the group wants. And so uh, this note comes with the booking details to the operator and he knows the time for uh, 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 he wants to see a special part of the museum. It's uh, often so that we have a program and but the group wants to see only the frescoes. And so we show naturally the frescoes. We would like to return to the, the room now. Uh, Adli? Uh, thank you for giving me the word. Dear Mrs. President, um, my name is Hadli. I am from Vienna, Austria. And as was said before we started this session, we have quite a lot of difficulties in words and translations and so on. And I was also struck by the word ethics in the presentation of Vagan Manokyan. And thank you very much for your presentation from the Kafestian Art Center. When I heard you use the word ethics, I thought it will be a philosophical, institutional aspect that you would touch on. And then I was quite negatively surprised that what was behind the word ethics was teaching children what they cannot do in a museum. It doesn't really cover my concept of ethics, but it doesn't matter. What you presented to us, I think, I would very much like to congratulate you for, because from your presentation and also from my experience at visiting a Christian Art Center, one got a very clear idea, I got a very clear idea, that the museum, the Art Center, has a clear mission it has a very clear statement at the heart of its activities, which is offering experience with contemporary art to informal learners. And from visiting the Cafestian the day before yesterday and watching people, ordinary, non-learned, informal visitors, enjoying, reflecting, reacting to the artworks, one got the feeling that the ethics, the philosophical concept, the mission that the museum is based on, really works. So I think there is a clarification of words in the, of the word ethic, but possibly also a, a big applause for your work being done there. I really got the feeling it works. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. And, uh, if I may just uh, reflect your concern about the ethics, we always know 
the all knowing fact as museum professionals about museum code and ethics, which is in global terms that we should always adhere to uh, to be considered as, as such. Uh, when you project that work to six to twelve year old children, it becomes so museum rules and behavior. You know. That's that's it. That's what it Thank you very much. <laughs> No. Can I? Uh, can I? How about we have questions that or not, that helps to detain what the presenters have uh, uh, said. But there are other types of questions or remarks about the tool itself, the tool that was used or pre and presented by my captain. The difficult issue uh, with the best practice tool, as what we have seen here now also, is that once one has achieved the program, one speaks of it, it is considered as a best practice. But then one cannot put back words on what has brought that program to exist. And it is really a difficult exercise, once something is finished, to be able to go back to the origin. And I think that these Marie is really expecting from all the awarded projects to really sort of think back loud uh, how it all started, all the questions which were asked, uh, all the difficulties, some of them have been more explicitly explained, uh, and not so much on the result, but really yes, the whole thinking and reflection progress, program that has brought the program to exist. But is there a presenter who would like to uh, answer Nicole's uh, question or not? So what brought to, to that program was we always try to associate educational programs with our exhibitions. And this particular one was so that children were not spectators, just simple spectators. They were participants in the creative process. And this was the main idea, to take them into action. It was through entertainment, of course, which was closer to their uh, this creativity and imagination concept, this animation movie, uh, the tour in the gallery, and of course, giving them opportunity just to create with simple basic shapes and forms. We, we introduced them to those shapes and forms. And that's it. It's just through entertainment, educate, enlighten. Nicole had used a very interesting word that I think it, it need, needs to be uh, uh, put inside the tool in, in a more evident way. And it's what difficulties do we find to develop this project? Or what failed? Because you get a, a, a best or good practice to be flexible, to change process, to, to really we rearrange things and, and it's only when you think out oh, this failed, this never functioned. So we need to change, we need to be flexible as educators. I think it is important that, that uh, the people can share us not only the, the products but the process and what things were good that what things need to be changed. Before taking a uh, remark or question from the from the room, I would like to give a word to Francisco. Yes, to, to answer to you. Um, we have a, 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 the question is not why from the program is created. We have a public, we have visitors, and our work is to um, to make guided tours, no, to make more than guided tours for public, to, uh, to uh, educate public to uh, heritage, to cultural heritage, uh, to communicate this is not the cultural heritage of our country, it's common heritage. Um, and so we uh, have our work every year, but with um, uh, 
seasonal programs that, um, um, that go in progress. So we never have the, the same visit. After uh, six months, we go and remain <laughs> the visit, a new visit uh, that um, uh, contains the <coughs> new uh, questions that public or institutions want to insert in, in, in the program. <coughs> so it's, um, we are not, uh, it's not a project with a uh, and, 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 and. Our is a project uh, of, uh, of a service of the museum. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's curious, but it's uh, a semi-institutional service. It exists because, because the museum. We have questions on one. Oh. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm Ajahn from Indonesia. Uh, I want. I have a question for a uh, from the audience. It's a simple question. Uh, you say that you, uh, uh, the children's come to the museum learn. Um, the ethics and watch the animation and the writing short stories. Uh, how long the duration of the ethics for, from the coming to the museum until they finish the writing their stories? And uh, one more question for Francesco. Um, uh, why did you um, organize that? Uh, uh, so your of culture. I mean, is it because your museum in your country is, is passive, so you you try to make an active thing uh, with your own? Thank you. So if I understood correctly, the question was how much was the animation and uh, how long did it last? Oh, the whole program. The whole program lasted an hour and a half. The, an hour and a half, yes. And the animation was 10 minutes.
uh, at the at other program you did before. That's what I expected to answer. But I would like to uh, uh, you to comment about that if you uh, achieved more by by uh, by following the I concept of best practice guideline. The question was, uh, do you think that by using, following the tool, the different things of the tool, do you think it helped you uh, achieving a better program? Uh, well, to be honest, the, the uh, program uh, started in 2004 <laughs> and the best practice and ended in 2011 and the best practice tool was launched that last year, so we uh, have to look back and to analyze afterwards. So uh, in this case, but I think it's not helpful, of course. I think if I may add to that, uh, your presentation it was a great, great tool. It helped us be focused, be concise, and be close to the message that we want to communicate. It was a great tool for presentation. I think that in, in, in conclusion, that uh, it, it is, of course, uh, that a tool that's in the making. So. Uh, it's not yet, it has not, because of the time, you know, because of the calendar. I think you, you may ask this question probably next year, yes. you know, to people that have worked on a program during the, during the year. Uh, what I think is interesting is when you say that it clarified your presentation, and what we do hope is that it will clarify the conception of the program, the preparation of the program. Just clarify, it, not say you should put this in that. Just clarify the issue. For example, I have a question for you. I don't know whether the like still have time. Do we have still time? Yeah. Good. That was, uh, for example, in in the uh, in the English uh, word the um, social relevance. In, in the relevance thing, I, I noticed that you didn't. None of you answered all the different relevance. And uh, my question would be, uh, if you feel that some of them you just didn't think of that and were not relevant to your point, or was it because it was afterwards as Hong was saying and that you just couldn't remember why and, and things like that. So just that would be my question about the different levels of, we have in, institutional relevance, social relevance, and uh, scientific relevance. For example, nobody, and it's very interesting, but yes, Francesco touched it without naming it, but just to be a finish my that. But I mean, it was also a question of time. You had five minutes <laughs> for this point, conceiving and planning, so we had to skip something. And um, as I already also said, um, for us, for the whole project, um, not all points of the, um, the tool um, have been. Um, as, uh, yeah, or applicable, uh, but for the single projects more. So maybe there um, we we would go deeper in with all the um, the points. But from analyzing, from from looking back, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Michael, I did. I I I uh, Michael. Well. I understand. I understand what you said, and the uh, problem next year. But I found uh, today. Well, I consider the best guide, practice guideline, is good tool for reporting or presentation. <laughs> That's what I found today. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, I would like to suggest another name: best result practice. 
best to be good in practice. I think that would be good. Uh, but then, best to results in practice. Best to results in practice. Thank you, Guan. And I would like to uh, thank you, all of you, for uh, your participation. Special, special thanks to the presenters and to my party. So I give you a rendezvous for tomorrow. Next question.